Very much. We're still in July and the season's about to start. Yeah, really excited. Um, we've prepared properly. Um, we've worked as hard as we could over the pre-season. Me and my staff have been really organised. We can't wait for the start of the season in the first game. How different are we going to see Middlesbrough this season from the last couple of seasons? Um, like I've said before, each manager have different philosophies and, and, and man's, man's totally different how I see the game being played. Um, like I said in my previous press conference, I want us to, to attack teams, press teams, and now uh, really get about them. Are you one of these managers who doesn't mind if they score two as long as you've scored three? Or are you a one so I want to keep man? I want to keep clean sheets. Yeah. There's, a, there's a time um, when you stay compact, and there's a time when you can press in different areas. You don't just go willy nilly. Um, but it's how I see the see the game being played, high energy, and try to score goals. New signings have been fairly thin on the ground. Mm. There's still a little bit of time remaining. How optimistic are you that you might get some more in? Yeah, I'm optimistic. I think we'll we'll sign a few more players. I think it's important. I think at the minute we're really thin. Um, we need to add to the squad. Um, that, that's for sure. And I'm sure Adrian and Neil are working as hard as they can to make this happen. And what are the priorities for you in terms of the positions? Well, I know what I want myself, but I'm not going to broadcast it live. Um, what I want. Okay. Um, Steve Gibson is uh, a chairman who's always had very good relationships with his managers and has given them plenty of time and, and money as well, mm. usually. How's your relationship with him and is it maybe different because you're a local lad? I have a fantastic relationship with the chairman. Um, really good. Um, he's given me the opportunity at the end of the day. Um, but it's strictly professional and that's how it will remain. You played here. That must have been a dream as a Middlesbrough boy. Is, is this going to be even more of a dream, something that as a lad growing up... Is well, I never... When I was a young kid, I only had dreams about playing for Middlesbrough. But since I was about, say, 30-year-old, I always wanted to manage a football club. Um, so it, um, I'm privileged to, to manage this fantastic football club. Does it put extra pressure on you being local, or, or does it give you a little bit more...? There's bigger things in life which, with, with, with more pressure to it, that's for sure. But in terms of, of you for your first managerial mm. job... Uh, as as the number one, it's a very big, very high profile club, isn't it? So yeah, it's a, it's a it's a it's a big club for my first job. But like <laughs> I say, I'll take it in my stride. Um, I've got great support staff around me, and all the staff at the football club will help me. The managers um, that you mentioned, you, you you've taken something from people that you've you've managed uh, today. I don't know if you're aware, it's the, it's the tenth anniversary <coughs> that, that we lost to Bobby Robson. Mm. He brought you to to Newcastle from Real Madrid. Yeah. What, what have you taken from him? As a man no, he brought me from Leeds. He brought me from Leeds Sorry, to Newcastle. Leeds. Yeah. What, 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 what have you taken from him as a manager and a, as a man? Um, his enthusiasm, his man management, the way he was every day in training, doing drills at, at 70 years old, that way he treat you um, when you played well and when you didn't play so well, but you'd still go to the office feeling like you were the best player. He was fantastic for me. I learned so much from him. And it's what I'll try to do with my players, try to give them lots of confidence, but be totally honest with them. That's what Bobby Robson was. He was a fantastic person. And he even visited me um, two years later in Madrid, and I spoke to him at great length. He's a fantastic, fantastic man, and he's, and he's sadly missed. And if you're still a manager when you get to 70, you'll have done all right, won't you? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Got to get to 50 first and 40. <laughs> well, well, uh, away from Sir, Sir Bobby, what, what other things have you taken from other managers that you've, that you've played? Um, well, I've had some, some fantastic managers like I've been through before. Um, I think I've worked for over, over 20 managers. Um, if you look at David O'Leary in a similar situation as me, 39-year-old got the job, um, decided to put a lot of young players in. Um, he did a fantastic Fantastic job. He showed how brave he was as a manager. And you look at the likes of um, and I talk around, a fantastic organiser. Um, really got a, a team bonding together. And if you look at Harry Redknapp, the Teddy Venables, the man management, what they did to the players on and off the pitch was fantastic. I could go through it every single, every single manager I've worked with. Um, Paul Hart and Eddie Gray, what they instilled in me from a young age as a Leeds United schoolboy playing in youth team football. Um, the amount, the amount of pressure they put on you to win games, and have that winning mentality, even in training sessions, to do that week in, week out. But that's helped me immensely, um, and always to, as a kid, to practice, practice, practice. That what, that's what they instill into you. You've really got to put the hours in if you wanna, you wanna get somewhere. 
you mentioned David O'Leary and the style of football and, and the youngsters. It, might Middlesbrough be a new Leeds United no. 20 years on from then? No, mm-hmm. Leeds United was a one-off. We had an incredible bunch of young, young players at that time. And I think that's obviously hard to come by now. We have got some good young players coming through. Some will play in the first team, some will go on loan. It's about how we, where we put them to, to make them progress. But at the minute, Middles was not like Leeds United. Leeds are the favourites to win the division this year. Yeah. Your joint sixth favourite with yeah. uh, most of the bookies. Mm. Is that how you would see yourselves at this moment in time? Um, I haven't really, really thought about prices or whatever Leeds have favourites. That's just someone's opinion. Every every opinion's a different. My opinion is we'll give it a right good go, a right good go, and it won't be for lack of trying. Put it like that. I mentioned that, that you were a Middlesbrough fan as you were growing up. If you were 8, 10, 12 years old now living in Middlesbrough with this team and with, with you as manager, how excited would you be as a supporter? Yeah, I'd be, I'd be really excited. You know, we're a young young coaching team. We're vibrant. Um, we want to try and buy younger players and, 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 and get younger players into the team. So I'd be, I'd be really excited. It's a good time to support Middlesbrough at the minute. One player who might be on the move but would obviously be... Uh, uh, not on your shopping list. He's at another of your former clubs at the moment, Gareth Bale at Real Madrid. What have you made of the situation there? Gareth Bale's been unbelievable at Real Madrid. He's won four European Cups at Real Madrid. That is unbelievable. Won one league. He's had an incredible career. An incredible career. He's a fantastic guy. He'll just keep his head down and, and graft away. I've got nothing but admiration for Gareth Bale. OK, thank you. Thanks. Jonathan, I mean, do you think this uh, this opportunity has come at the right time for you as a, as a coach, or perhaps a little bit earlier than you expected? Um, I'm ready. I'm ready, and obviously the chairman thinks I'm ready for it. Um, I think I'll be a success. I think I've got the work ethic to do that. Obviously, you need the right players. If we can add a few more, then I think we'll we'll get that. You have the chairman, the chief exec, and the head of recruitment of endorsing your your appointment. Um, Clearly, you've got a brief to to bring on the youngsters, and you showed that in the in the friendly on Sunday, didn't you? I mean, people like Hayden Colson, obviously impressing. Yeah, I think Hayden's been a standout performer all pre-season. Um, I was trying to push Hayden Colson uh, mm-hmm. two seasons back now, where Tony Pulis first got the job. I see Hayden as a fantastic talent. Um, he went on, on loan twice last season and, and didn't do great at times, but it's obviously the environment sometimes that you put him into. I think now we've got a fantastic environment at the football club. I'm behind him. I'll give him all the confidence in the world to succeed. He can play a number of positions for me. And if you see it today again in training, he was he was uh, he was fantastic. He'll be, in my view, Hayden Coulson will be going places. You've been coaching obviously under Tony Pulis, and, and you mentioned um, at, at the press conference just how much he'd done behind the scenes to sort of set foundations for perhaps the, the future that you're taking yeah. on. Well, he set foundations for myself as well. I said, I've said numerous occasions without Tony Pulis and his grounding and what he did for me, that learning experience that I had from him, I wouldn't be here now. He gave me, he gave me um, roles to do within the football club. I could have one-on-one meetings with players. I could hold team meetings. I did training sessions, shape sessions. He'd, he'd let me do. He really, I really enjoyed working because he gave me that that freedom and helped me along how to deal with different situations. So without without Tony and his, his guidance. It, it would be difficult. The experience I learned from him was fantastic. You've talked about being short on numbers and that uh, Adrian and Neil are working hard behind the scenes, but uh, obviously you've brought in a couple of young players lately, at the weekend, Mark Bowler and uh, Marcus Brown, but you also said, uh, don't forget, we need some experience as well. Is that the key to get the blend of youth and experience right? Yeah, I'll, that's what I'll, I'll go back to. The, the Leeds United days when I say we brought young players in, but we had Nigel Martin, a David Batty, a David Weatherall, a Lucas Radderby behind that. So that, that, that's what you need. You need that right blend. You need the George friends in the group. You need the Johnny Elsons. You need them, that right blend to bring these players on, what it takes to make it at the top. Because you can have all the ability in the world, but if you haven't got the attitude and the desire and the hunger to get there, you won't get there. Ability can only take you so far. So that's why you have these players in your dressing room, the good players, but also to bring your younger players on. George Friend and Darren Randolph obviously missing for the friendly. Do you think they'll be OK building the game? Um, I'd like to think so. <clears throat> and that game, obviously, they're always dangerous opponents. Teams have just got promoted. Luton seems to be sort of on very much of an upward trajectory, but Borough have got a very good away record. 
Yeah, we've got a good away record, but like you say, a newly promoted team, a Friday night game live on Sky, they'll fill fill the stadium uh, without no shadow of a doubt. But I'll say every week, the championship, every game's tough. Every game is a, is a cup final. It's relentless. The league is relentless. It's non-stop. Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday. Whenever there's games thick and fast, you've got the League Cup, the FA Cup. It's constant. It's absolutely constant. So every game is difficult. Finally, for me, I'm talking to a lot of the Borough fans before the friendly on Sunday. A lot of them talked about, yes, a player push would be nice. But nearly everyone said, we want to see exciting attacking football. Is, is that what you're that's what, I'm, that's what I'm planning to do. That's my plan. And I won't go away from that. Every day in training, we do that. So that's, that's where I'm at. I mean, the players know exactly where I, what I want and um, what I want them to do individually. Um, if we stay brave as a, as, a, as a team and me as a manager stay brave, we can, we can do that. Just a couple, Jonathan. Um, Luton were fantastic in League One last season. Um, and now you've also got the job of looking at teams, so having looked at Luton, what, what do you make of them? They're, they're, they're a really good team. They, they play with a lot of, lot of energy, free flowing. They'll play, they'll play football under, under Graham Jones. Um, I saw him last year working for West Brom. They'll, they'll definitely play, and it's up to us to try and try and stop that and counter press that. You touched on it a bit, but it, it, it ticks a lot of boxes for a first game, isn't it? It's a really nice first game. Is it? <laughs> in your view? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, that's in your view. <laughs> um, every game, like I've said, every game in this championship is so hard. Maybe Luton Town away, maybe West Brom at home. Barn, um, Barnsley away, Charlton at home. Every single game in this championship is tough, and Luton will be a really tough, tough game for us. Um, so on the eve of the of your first proper game, first full game as manager in the league, does it feel like yours now? Yeah, felt like that from day one. Um, I've, inst I've instilled what I wanted from my coaching staff um, to my players. They know exactly, exactly what I want.